Morning everyone, welcome to our kids time today. Hey, we wanna get started by talking about a, a cat, right? Just a cuddly, old, purr in your lap cat that weighs, mm, I don't know, about 180 kilograms, right? Just a, just a friendly curl up on your couch kind of cat that weighs um, like as much as two of me, right? Anyways, you know what? Uh, we're not gonna keep you in suspense guessing what kind of, yeah, we are gonna guess what kind of cat. Here's what we're gonna do. I want you to see, I'm gonna give some stats about this type of cat and you see if you can figure out which type of cat I'm talking about, okay? So, I've already given you the first one. The men, the males, can weigh up to 180 kilograms, all right? Stat number one. Number two, they live in groups of about, oh, 10 to 15 called a pride, okay? Uh, let's see, the females can weigh about up to about 130 kilograms. All right, let's see, they can run really fast, but they're not the fastest cat. But they can run up to 80 kilometers an hour for short little bursts. That's like as fast as the speed limit on the highway out here, okay? 180, you know, 80 kilometers an hour. I was getting my numbers all mixed up. 80 kilometers an hour for short bursts. That's how fast they can run. What else can I tell you about them? They, um, ooh, ooh, when they make their big famous loud sound, uh-huh, not a purr, but uh it can be heard for like eight kilometers away. All right, last stat about this particular cat. The boys have very, very famous and distinct hairstyles. All right, you got it figured out, I'm sure, right? You know what I'm talking about? We're talking about lions, right? Lions, right? They can run 80, up to 80 kilometers an hour for a short little bit. They, their roar can be heard eight kilometers away. And uh, they're big and strong and awesome. Did you know that their bite, last, last little bit, their bite is six times stronger than that of a human's, like their ability to like crush stuff with their jaws, right? It's even stronger than the bite of a great white shark, all right? It's just they're massive, they're strong, they're fast, they're loud, they're hairy, they're just magnificent animals. And yet I imagine I'd be as allergic to them as any other cat. But uh, we're, we, we're gonna talk about Daniel again today and Daniel got to know some lions really, really well. Like he like had a sleepover with lions one day, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. Let's back up to where the story begins. You see, Daniel's still in Babylon. And they've got this, this the king uh, of the day of this year was, where's his name? Darius, all right? Right, because we had Nebuchadnezzar and there was a King Cyrus in there. And now we're on the King Darius. And when Darius was king, he realized that the kingdom was so big, um, it was a little more work than he was really able to just do all by himself in terms of overseeing. So he divided it all up and he appointed 120 princes. All right, 120 people to kind of oversee different territories and regions. And then they all reported to a team of three, like prime ministers or presidents or someone like that, right? Like three governors, people in charge of the 120. And then there was one person in charge of the three who oversaw the 120. And that wasn't even the king. That was Daniel. The king saw that Daniel was such a good leader and such an wise young man and so smart and so um, just exceptional in all he does, the king was putting him in charge of the presidents who were in charge of the princes who were in charge of the whole kingdom. So like Daniel was like the top guy, all right? It's like the king and then Daniel and then everybody else, all right? That was where Daniel found himself in that incredible position of authority and influence and responsibility. Well, Daniel though was still a foreigner, right? And the people, a lot of people knew that, but because of how he was so trusted by the king and in such an important position, a lot of people were really jealous of Daniel, right? Especially the, like the three presidents who were under him. They didn't understand why Daniel got to be the guy and not them. 
So they kind of looked for a plan where they could discredit Daniel, some sort of way that they could get Daniel to lose his job or even lose his life or just basically get uh, out of the picture. So they looked for different options and they looked for different ways that they could get Daniel gone. And um, eventually they realized, you know what? The only way to get rid of Daniel is to get him to break some kind of rules. But Daniel was so good, he doesn't break the king's rules. They'd have to kind of get a new rule that would be where Daniel would maybe um, uh, would have to choose between being faithful to God or faithful to the king. So they go to the king, right? They thought, we're gonna use Daniel's faithfulness to God against him. They go to the king, they, they talk up the king. Oh, king, you're so great. Why don't you live forever? Why don't you to be the top guy? We want everyone to worship you. We think that you're awesome. We want everyone to realize it. So king, how about a new law? How about a new law where people um, can't pray to anyone but you? How about a law where we just like, we shut down prayer and then, then that'll be fine? And the king says, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good de- idea. Yeah, let's, let's do that. So they, they set up this new law. And of course, the king signs it in the law. News goes out all over the whole kingdom, right? And uh, of course, eventually gets to Daniel. And Daniel hears the, new, the news and he goes, hmm. He goes back to his house to pray about it, right? Now, Daniel prayed like three times a day, right? He was a regular a person of regular prayer, okay? His life was governed by prayer. He asked God for help. He just was three times a day spending time praying, seeking God's uh, direction, right? That was really the source of Daniel's wisdom was in spending time in prayer with God. So Daniel goes back to his place to pray about it. And uh, Daniel, as was his practice, he would open his windows and he would pray towards Jerusalem because that's what uh, King Solomon had instructed a while back, right? Back when when he was king and and that became a tradition for a lot of Israelites. And so Daniel was praying to God in this faithful way, like he always did. And of course, right outside his window where the princes and a number of the princes and the other, the, the presidents and the governors, all the other people in charge, the ones that were trying to trick Daniel and trap Daniel, and so they hear him pray, so they rush off to the king. King, 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 you won't believe it. Um, you signed that law, right? Yeah, 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 I signed the law, he says. Okay, well, uh, we got a problem, because Daniel was just praying. And you remember, king, there's a little bit of saying, king, you remember, that's the law, and you can't break the law, and Daniel's breaking the law, and what are you gonna do, king? So the king goes, okay, well, we gotta be true to the law. That's the law. He realized he was tricked. He realized that they were jealous of Daniel, but the law was the law and he was kind of stuck. He couldn't make exceptions to the law because if he made an exception to this law, uh, well, then he'd have to make exceptions for other things. So he has Daniel arrested. And the punishment was to be thrown into the lions. This was a particularly um, brutal punishment where if you broke the worst of the laws, you'd be thrown into this pit where lions were and the lions would basically eat you. All right? So they take Daniel, they arrest him, they throw him in the pit with the lions, and then they close it up, and the king, everybody goes home, right? They basically leave Daniel for dead. They just assume that that's it, that's lions, they're hungry, they eat uh, Daniel's meat, you know, they just figure it's naturally gonna happen. So the king goes back to his castle and he can't sleep. He just kind of is awake all night, just pacing. He's just, he's, he's torn up by it, right? He just, he feels horrible about the way he was tricked and about how his best leader in the whole kingdom was basically dead. And uh, he, he, he has a horrible night. So the next morning, he goes back to the, the lion's den, right? He has it opened up and he calls into the darkness to see if Daniel's still there, right? He calls for Daniel. Daniel, has God rescued you? And Daniel answers back. Right? Daniel answers him, oh king, it's all right. You know, my God rescued me. He shut the mouths of the lions and I am okay. Well, the rule was you had to go into the lion's den. The rule wasn't how long you had to stay there. So they get Daniel right out, right? They have him come out and he's totally fine. Not a scratch on him. Basically, he was like cuddling with lions all night, had a great sleep, right? He's fine. So they haul him out and the king is just like, he goes from being incredibly worried, right? Like mad that he was tricked, worried for Daniel's safety, and now relieved, right? Relieved that Daniel's okay. And now he's, then he moves on to being angry again. 
angry at the people who tricked him, so he has all of them round up, thrown into the lion's den for tricking him, and the lions, uh, they treat these guys a whole lot differently than Daniel was treated, right? They don't make it to the next day. Then the king puts a new law in place, right? Puts a new law. And everyone should tremble with fear and honor the God whom Daniel trusted. The king declared he is the living God, the true God that you all should be aware of. And may his kingdom last forever and never be destroyed. Okay? So did you see that? The king goes from like uh, all those sorts of moods and feelings, but ultimately settles on uh, relief and trust in the God of Daniel. And Daniel was this incredible witness to the king and to the people uh, of how good God is because Daniel was faithful to God. And that's the key word for us this week is we want to talk about what it means that Daniel was faithful to God. And faithfulness is that um, we, uh, is understanding and accepting that we are where we are supposed to be and that we are doing what we are supposed to do. That's faithfulness. When we are where we're supposed to be and we're doing what we're supposed to do, and that's Daniel, right? He had incredible pressure to, sn- to stop praying. He, you know, uh, I think few of us would have faulted Daniel if he just went, you know what? Uh, King says, don't pray. I guess I won't pray. But that wasn't an okay answer for Daniel. He was going to keep praying even if the king said no, right? Daniel was faithful. And our encouragement for us this week, for you, for me, for all of us who can learn from Daniel is that we are to be where we're supposed to be and we are to do what we are supposed to do. Not only when it is easy, but also when it is hard, right? Like for example, um, the, you know, what, what if people at school or, or you know, other people you know start making fun of you for believing in God, right? Will you be faithful to God? Will you continue to believe even if people make fun of you for it? Will you, um, how, how will you respond if people make fun of you for going to church or for praying with your family, right? All of those things are, are potential areas where people might make fun of us or misunderstand. And we need to be people who are going to continue to be faithful to God. Um, if you've printed out your field notes, we've got like a little handout for you. And uh, it looks just like this. And uh, in it, there's four different areas of life where I want you to think about some of the ways that you will be faithful to God, right? How will you be faithful when you're at home? And how will you be faithful when you're with your friends or at school or at church? All right? And uh, maybe talk about that with your parents. Mom, Dad, how can, I, how, how can I be faithful? See what they think. See what they do. Have them fill this out with you. Say, Mom, Dad, how are you faithful when you're at work? Mom, Dad, how are you faithful when, when you're picking me up from school or when you're with other parents from, school, from this school, right? Uh, great, really important conversations to be having with them because how we act tells a whole lot about what we really believe, um, right? And that was Daniel. He revealed his character by being faithful to God. And that sort of takes us to our memory verse, right? Proverbs 20, verse 11. Even a child makes his... No, sorry. Even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. Right? Let's say that one more time. Even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. And that's Proverbs 20, verse 11. Guys, have a, have a, have a wonderful week. Enjoy summer. But most of all, keep being faithful to God. And we'll see you again next week.